Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're going to talk about how to deal with talkative signers at the table. And I'm going to give you actionable steps to navigate through that when it comes up, because it does come up. Now, if you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. We would love to have you check out our Rolodex of videos that are designed to help notary signing agents start, grow, and scale their business, even up towards a signing service level, if you want. That way we can give back to the notary signing agent community that is been so generous to me in my journey. So please check that out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like and share the video to another notary that could get value from this content, especially if they're on the newer side, they definitely can. Now, let's get right into it. What are examples of when signers are being talkative? And I don't mean just, you know, conversation that normally comes up. Hey, what's the weather? Hey, is this the first time you've ever, you know, done loan signings? Or is this your career? Is the side hustle for you? Like those conversations, they typically come up all the time. What I'm talking about is specifically when the signers will never close their mouth. They just love to talk. Now, sometimes it's talking with you, the individual notary, let's say you go to their house to do a seller pre-sign or a refinance and they want to talk your ear off. Or maybe the spouses are talking to each other repeatedly about you know different things that may not have anything to do with the transaction itself, or they're dealing with the kids. Or it could be at a closing when the buyers, buyers and sellers are together and they're talking to each other because the sellers want to share the house and family history with the buyers because they feel like they're passing that legacy on to the next owners. And that's very normal for that to come up in conversation. And the last example I'll give you is when realtors or lenders want to interject and have conversation about the process, how they made it from start to finally at the closing table, or just general advice about paying down their mortgage early, home warranties, when they're getting their deed, many different things could come up. Now, at these settlements, you don't wanna come across as unprofessional, rude, pushy, but you also don't wanna take an hour, an hour and a half at the table because trust me, no one there at the table, the realtors, lenders, signers, title, they don't want signing service, they don't want you there for an hour or more. They want you to get in and out professionally and efficiently. Doesn't mean rushing, just means documents are signed flawlessly, questions are answered that you can answer, and everyone is, has a great experience. But occasionally what will happen at the table is, as I mentioned in those examples, people will want to talk. Now, what I do not, and I would suggest you don't do, and I have seen in the field, there are two ways you want to not really the right ways to handle this. One way is to be aggressive. So that is to try to shut down the conversation in a very rude, unprofessional way and say, hey, look, we gotta get these documents signed. You guys can talk all you want once the documents are signed and I'm out of here, okay? And just interrupting the conversation or trying to shut it down. That comes across incredibly unprofessional. You're going to get neg very negative feedback from everyone involved that will make its way back to the hiring party, whether that was the title company directly or the signing service, the middle man involved, we're going to find out about it. And then not only will you have a negative review, you'll lose the revenue with that hiring party and future revenue, especially if it's on a signing service platform where everyone can see negative reviews about how you didn't handle yourself professionally. And I get it. You're trying to get in and out. You might have other appointments like you're like, chop, chop, time is money. I get it. I understand. We all feel those frustrations as well. And the opposite reaction, you know, that's more, this is more my speed where, you know, people start talking about the, the house and the history of the house and their offer and why they chose their offer, et cetera. And how many houses they looked at. Like I'm the guy that would just sit back because I'm an introvert at heart and I'll sit back and I'll just let them talk and just let them go back and forth. And, uh, you know, and there's a tendency for me to want to be very passive in those instances and not say anything and just let them enjoy themselves. They, they've worked their butt to get here. Let them soak it in, which is fine. And I do that at first. But if you just sit there and don't get anything signed, you're going to be there an hour and a half. And ultimately, everyone's going to be upset at the end because they're checking their watch like, oh, I didn't realize we've been here for so freaking long. It's because you didn't step up and interject and get things moving. Now, how do you handle it without coming across as rude or pushy or taking forever because you're not doing anything. Here's how you do it. So what I typically do, and it's worked for me, and you can try this if you want, is when these situations come up, I typically will let the conversation go for about a minute. And then usually people that have awareness and self-awareness realize that, oh, I'm inconveniencing everybody, but by continuing to talk. The people that don't will just continue to talk oblivious because they're narcissists or because they're just oblivious of what's going on and they'll just keep talking or maybe they just don't care about other people's time. And, uh, and that's fine. After a minute has gone by and the conversation is still going, I will take the documents, especially this usually comes up for me the most in a buyer and seller when the, the buyer and seller are talking back and forth about the history of the house or 
you know, we're gonna take great care of it or what, what our plans are, et cetera, that's fine. I don't wanna stamp on that at all. So what I do is after a minute has gone by and I realize they're gonna keep talking, <laughs> I just get the next document for the buyers and I slide it to them and I point exactly where they need to sign and date. And the seller, I slide their next document to them and I point to where they need to sign and date. And I just continue that process. And you'll find what will happen is, is that they'll see the paper come over, they'll see you point and sign, and they're wanna, gonna continue to want to have that conversation keep going and to be respectful to the other person that's talking across the table. So what they're gonna do is look down quickly, sign, date, and they get back to the conversation. And that's ideally what you want because what will happen is the signing will actually go faster because you won't have to summarize every document. They're just literally signing, 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 and talking, talking, talking. That's really when the signings go the fastest is when they don't ask questions and they're just signing and dating. And that only happens when they're deep, deeply wrapped up in good conversation, which is fine. That I, I enjoy that. That's great. That makes my job easier because they're just signing a dating. And what will happen is about halfway through their remaining documents, one or both parties will look up and say, you know, something like, oh, ha ha ha. I'm not really sure what I'm signing. Ha <laughs> ha, hopefully it's nothing crazy. As if it's my fault that they're continuing to talk <laughs> and they want me, you know, it's that uh, passive aggressive. It's like, oh, you're passing me stuff and not explaining it and I'm letting you have the conversation, but I should also be explaining it while you're having the conversation and interrupting you. Again, you know, people are people and it's okay. But when that comes up, I'm like, hey, I'm happy to explain anything you want. You got questions, just fire away. And if they don't, I just keep passing documents. If they have a question about a specific document, I summarize it and then we move on to the next document. So it's up to them how much they want to ask me in those instances, but I was hired to get that job done for them, everyone in the room and my hiring party, and I will get it done, but I'm gonna be professional. I'm not interrupting anybody. I'm not pushing anybody. I'm just letting them do their thing and we're sliding documents. And this will happen even if it's a one-on-one, -on -one. you go to the sellers or the buyers or the person, uh, people doing a refi at their house and you just have a good conversation because you're very relaxed, you're experienced. You're asking about, you're talking about the weather, sports, you know, hopefully not politics, kids, whatever. And you're just having a good conversation and you're just sliding documents and they're just signing and dating. You're checking, signing and dating. You're just having a conversation. Ideally, those are the best signings personally to me because you get to really learn the most, engage the most with the people in the room and the, the signing goes by very quickly. Now I will caution you, keep this in mind. If that is the case where they're signing and dating and there's a lot of conversation going on, whether it's you and the signers or between each other or them and their agents or lenders, what will happen is more mistakes <laughs> because people are paying less attention, including yourself. So please double and triple check your work at the end because more than likely there's gonna be mistakes. There's gonna be dates that are the wrong date you know, I see people invert the year and the day repeatedly. You know, today is, as I'm filming this, July 3rd, 2024. So 7-3, 2024. Sometimes people will date it 7-24-3 because they're just not really thinking because they're trying to do two things at once, talk and conversate and also write numbers. Like, it's not a good mix. So more mistakes are likely to happen, which is fine because you have duplicates typically, but keep an eye out for that. So I hope this helps. Uh, this whole video was spurred on. I'll tell you the story. Uh, we got feedback earlier this week or at the end of last week from an agent we've worked with a lot. She's amazing. That has done a lot of closings for us and purchases, but the title company that observed the uh, signing take place, they mentioned that you know they took an hour and 10 minutes or something like that for a cash purchase, which normally takes you know 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes tops. That's because after talking with the notary that this is what happened. Like one party came late and one other party had kids with them. Like, and, uh, and you know, there was a lot going on. There's a lot of conversation. They didn't want to interrupt the kids and the parties talking to each other. And they took that more passive role, which I very understand. That's normally what I used to do at first. But then I realized this isn't what everyone wants. Everyone wants to get it done in a relatively quick fashion. And we got that feedback and I just told her exactly what I'm telling you guys on this video. You could definitely be courteous and respectful and be efficient by just continuing to pass documents and just point exactly where they need to sign a date and double check and triple check your work. And then, you know, if they have questions, they'll ask and you'll answer them and you'll keep it moving. So that is my suggestion, what has worked anecdotally for me in the field, for someone who's done a few thousand closings and is a signing service owner. And that will continue to be what I do when those situations come up, which is often. <laughs> so I hope you've gotten some value out of this. If you're new to the channel and you don't know a couple things, we offer 10% 
commissions to our notaries that send us title company introductions via email. So like if you have a direct client and they need a closing in a state you're not commissioned in, or they need a RON or bilingual closing and you can't assist or you don't know anyone locally that can assist, our team at Superlative Signings would love to help them out. All you have to do is email, introduce me, Brad at SuperlativeSignings.com and your title contact and let them know that Brad and his team will be happy to assist because we're covering closings in all 50 states and internationally with Ron or bilingual, whatever they need. And we pay you 10% commissions for whatever they send our way. We pay this every single month. July just wrapped up. I'm sending my commissions out for June, uh, paying out to a handful of notaries and one of our team members as well. Happy to pay it. It's a win-win for everyone. I hope this video has given you some value. If it has, please like and share the video to someone who could benefit from it. And feel free to check out the rest of the library and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you're still watching at the end of the video, you are a diehard YouTuber like me who just loves watching videos constantly in the background and learning as much as I can. So I appreciate you. Thank you so much for stopping by and I hope you've gotten some value out of it. And until next time, happy signings and peace.